Hey everyone, this is Nick, and if you're trying to escape the Microsoft ecosystem or suite of apps, there might be one key part you're having trouble replacing, and that's OneNote. Thankfully, there are plenty of options to replace OneNote on Linux, macOS, or Windows, whether they're open source or not, and whether you need the whole feature set or not. So we're going to take a look at that. And if you use something specific to replace OneNote, let me know down there in the comments and let everyone else know. It's always useful. Useful like this segue to today's sponsor. This video is sponsored by Linode. Linode is the only solution I use to run my own Nextcloud server and my only Office server as well. It's a super easy solution to deploy basically anything you want in one click. They have a huge marketplace of applications you can host, from Nextcloud, WordPress, Drupal, GitLab, or Grafana, to gaming servers for Minecraft, Arc, CSGO, Rust, Valheim, and more. They take care of all the configuration for you. All you have to do is click the thing you want to deploy, fill in a few details, and your server is up and running. And once everything is live, it's still super easy to manage your servers, to upgrade or downgrade them, add some storage, back them up, and get help if you're stuck. I've been using Linode for years now, and I can only recommend them. If you want to give them a shot, click the link in the description below, and you'll get $100 of free credit to get started. Okay, so let's begin with open source alternatives, because if you're leaving Microsoft, you might as well not jump into another proprietary piece of software. A simple note-taking alternative is NoteKit. It works on Linux and Windows, and it's written in GTK, so it should look at home on GNOME desktops. While it doesn't have the same notebooks organization as OneNote, it still has the ability to organize notes into folders, all accessible through a sidebar. It supports written notes using a mouse, a touchscreen, or a pen. It lets you create tasks with checkboxes, lets you add images, text formatting, it supports math formulas, it autosaves, and it lets you highlight syntax for various programming languages. It uses Markdown, which, spoiler alert, is going to be the case for most of the alternatives I'll talk about here. NoteKit is available as a DEB, it has a PPA, a copper repo for Fedora, an OpenSUSE build service package, and is available in the AUR as well. It's fast and free of charge, but it doesn't have a mobile app companion or any syncing capabilities, although you can sync your files yourself. Something a bit different, but that might just suit you as well if you're more interested in the collaborative features of OneNote. It's Nextcloud Collectives. This lets you create knowledge bases straight from your Nextcloud server. You can create collectives, which are basically notebooks, and pages inside of these. They support text formatting, adding images, to-do lists, emojis, code blocks, or tables. You can create templates for sub-pages and link to other pages in your Nextcloud collectives. And of course, you can manage who gets access to which collective in your Nextcloud server. It is free of charge, as long as you have access to adding applications to your Nextcloud server. Still, it's a fantastic choice to replace any kind of note-taking application, whether you're on Windows, macOS, or Linux, and it's accessible through the web browser, but there is no desktop app or mobile app to access these. And also, it sounds like something straight out of the USSR. Nextcloud is communist. Confirmed. Of course, I have to mention Obsidian, because if I don't, I will get swarmed by comments asking me what I didn't include it. And most of these comments usually sound like it's a huge conspiracy or something. I'm really wondering why you didn't include Obsidian. So, Obsidian is open source. It's available for Linux, Windows, macOS, iOS, and Android. It lets you organize text documents in one place, with a focus on connecting your documents, with a graph view that represents all the links from one node to another. It supports Markdown and won't bother you with a toolbar with text formatting. You write it yourself using Markdown syntax. Although, like anything else in Obsidian, you can change that thanks to a big plugin system. You can create notebooks, notes, but they're all just files, and you can use Obsidian as a text editor as well if you want. It has plenty of cool features, like powerful search that also lets you switch to the right tab if your file is already open. You have templates, you have a command bar that lets you type what you want to do and find the associated command or keyboard shortcut. It's really powerful. 
You can sync your notebooks or vaults, as they call them, for $10 a month, but they don't support handwritten notes. If you're coming from OneNote, Obsidian is probably not the easiest app to get used to, but it's really, really powerful. Zettler is another open source and free of charge alternative, more geared towards research. It supports tabs in the interface, it has full markdown capabilities, including YAML front matter variables, it lets you organize your files through folders, and it handles external reference documents that you can link to your notes and always have accessible through the interface. It also won't just display markdown tags, but will render them into a more legible format, although you can pick and choose which tags are rendered and which just stay as plain markdown. It lets you link to other nodes, it handles citations through JSON or BibTeX, it has dark mode and themes, search, hashtags, and you can even create projects that group multiple nodes but can be exported all at once into a PDF, for example. Notes are saved individually as markdown files, so you can sync them to your favorite cloud storage solution of choice. There's no handwritten note support and no mobile applications, but it is one of the most powerful alternatives on this list. It might look a bit busy at first and it will take a few notes to get used to it, but afterwards it's a joy to use. It's available for Linux as a deb, an RPM or an app image, and also for Windows and macOS. Now, all of the previous solutions did not include mobile apps or native syncing capabilities, so let's look at one option that does all that. It's Joplin. It supports images, videos, documents, audio files, math formulas, as well as note sharing and collaboration. You can save web pages as notes with a browser extension, and you can write in Markdown. Joplin is also open source and can use end-to-end -end encryption if you want. It doesn't do handwritten notes, but it does virtually everything else that OneNote does. And it has mobile apps for iOS and Android. And you can sync your notes using your own cloud storage, like Nextcloud, Dropbox, or OneDrive. Or you can use Joplin Cloud, which will be a paid option, from 149 euros a month up to 669 euros per month. Nice. For more storage space and more features. Joplin is probably the most competent OneNote alternative on this whole list. If you don't need handwritten notes, that's probably what you should go and use. Get it while you can and say bye bye baby to OneNote. Let's hope it doesn't get the cosmic blues. Okay, sorry, I'll stop now. Summertime. And if all you want is handwritten notes, then there's Rnote. It supports writing notes using a stylus with pressure sensitivity. It has shape tools, selection tools, you can customize the page, background and format, configure stylus buttons, it supports drag and drop, importing from various file formats, and it has a modern GTK interface that looks pretty great, at least on GNOME. You can work with pages or continuous documents, and you can still type text normally if you don't have your stylus handy. It's available for Linux on Flathub. It doesn't have a mobile application, and it also doesn't do native sync, so you will have to sync your files manually through any service of your choice. But if all you need is handwritten notes, it's really, really good. Of course, that's not all the options. You have QO Notes, a KDE app that works with Nextcloud Notes and has basically all the features you might ever want in a note-taking application, although its interface is far from being beautiful. You also have Xernal++, which takes our note further with more handwritten note-taking features, but an older UI as well. As for open source alternatives, my favorites in that list will be Joplin, because it's so complete, it syncs with everything, you can use your own storage, and the only thing it lacks, handwritten notes, is a no-brainer for me, I never use that. But if you do, then you probably should use a combination of Joplin and maybe drawing your notes in R notes on a Linux device. Now let's look at some non-open source options. Now, while personally I will always pick a false option over a proprietary one if it can do the same thing, some people just don't care. Be one though, since they're not open source, you don't know what they're doing with the data, so they might not be very private. I've talked about Zoho as an alternative to the whole Microsoft or Google suite, and Zoho has a good note-taking application called Zoho Notebooks. As its name implies, it lets you create notebooks with notes inside of them. They support rich text formatting, adding media files like images or audio, 
linking other file types like PDFs. You can set reminders in notes, have to-do lists, tables, quotes, code blocks, and it supports handwritten notes as well. They have a mobile app for iOS and Android, a web clipper extension to save web pages to your notes, and it has a Linux version as well, although it seems to only come as a deb package. It's not open source, but it's free of charge with two gigabytes of storage. If you want unlimited storage, it's going to cost you 20 euros per year, which is not unacceptable. In general, if you can't self-host anything and you don't want to pay anything, the Zoho suite of apps is probably your best bet to replace every single service that Google or Microsoft has. Seriously, Zoho has more services and applications available for you right now than what Google killed since it started killing stuff. Now, you probably already know about this next one. It's Notion, something a lot of people have been talking about in the note-taking sphere. It's an extremely flexible program that lets you create not only text notes, but also to-do lists, project management tools, tables, knowledge bases, meeting notes, roadmaps, Kanban boards, and more. You can create your own templates or grab them from the community, and you can organize all of that into one single workspace. So yeah, it's basically exactly like OneNote, but with more templates. It's free of charge with paid plans to unlock more features, including more space for collaboration, revision history, guests that can view your notes but not modify them, and more. Notion is pretty great and they have mobile apps, a Windows and a macOS client, and since it's all Electron-based anyway, there's an unofficial Linux client, unfortunately called Lotion. It puts the lotion on its desktop or it gets the hose again. Or there's Notion Enhancer, which does the same thing but is more maintained and has a less creepy name. And one last one you probably also already know about, Evernote. It does everything from to-dos, text, rich formatting, audio notes, web clippings, notebooks, tags, advanced search, tables, calendars, task management. It basically evolved past its note-taking roots and now it became a full-on workspace where you can do anything you need that is work-related. It even lets you scan documents to import as notes or lets you connect a Google Calendar to add notes to meetings. You can create templates and of course sync everything with an Evernote account. Evernote is free, but the free version is really limited in storage space and note sizes. The paid plans get rid of these limitations and will cost you at least five euros and 83 cents per month. Evernote is the grand daddy of note taking on a computer. It does everything. It might even be more powerful than OneNote. But there is no native Linux client that I could find. Apparently, they did used to have a beta version of that client, but I could not find it anywhere anymore. But you do have unofficial ones like Nix Notes or Tusk. I often hear it's really hard to move away from OneNote. And well, now you know it's actually really easy. There are plenty of alternatives that will suit you. If you don't use every single feature of OneNote, there are tons of options to replace it. And if you do use every single feature, you have less options, but you still have a lot of them, although they most likely won't be open source. Personally, my favorites of the bunch would be Joplin, if you don't need handwritten notes, or Zettler, if what you do is more research-oriented if you try to write papers, for example. So, I hope there was something that floats your boat in this list. If there was, let me know in the comments down there. And if you were already using something that I didn't mention in the video, also let me know because I'm always happy to have new note-taking apps to try instead of actually writing stuff that I need to write. And I'm always happy about this segue to today's sponsor. If you're in the market for a new device and you want to run Linux on it, do not go and buy Windows laptops and try to slap Linux on it. Go buy a Tuxedo device. They are designed to run Linux out of the box and the hardware they pick is designed to support Linux. They have a big range of devices that they ship worldwide and they have a whole range of configuration options from CPUs, GPUs, RAM, SSD, your own logo laser etched on the lid of your laptop, your own custom keyboard layout laser etched on the keys. It's repairable, it's customizable, it's upgradable. It's a really good choice. And they have laptops, desktops for all price points and all use cases. 
So if you need a new device and you want to support Linux development and you want to make sure that your device will run Linux well, click the link in the description below and buy yourself a Tuxedo laptop or desktop. They're really good. So thanks everyone for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't hesitate to like, to subscribe, to turn on notifications, to write a comment. And if you didn't like it, well, there's that dislike button, but also tell me why in the comments as well. And if you really enjoy what I do, you can support the channel. There's a super thanks button underneath this YouTube video. There's a PayPal link in the description and there are links to my Patreon memberships and YouTube memberships. Both get access to a weekly podcast exclusive to those members and the right to vote on the next topics that I'll cover on the channel. So thanks for watching and I guess you'll see me in the next one. Bye.